a heat dome blamed for smashing temperature records in the western U.S. is now heading toward New England. Here in the studio with us tonight, a treat for us, Dr. Ali Raja, mm -hmm. Deputy Chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Massachusetts General. Good to see you, Dr. Raja. You too, Ben. You too, Jessica. Yes, good to have you. Let's talk about this and take a look at the forecast once again, if we can, because if you take a look at this, we have a lot of 90s coming up, right? 90s on Wednesdays, 90s on Thursday, and then Friday looks like it's going to be the worst there. 94 degrees you see there. Uh, is there anything your ER is doing right now to prepare for all of this? We are, Jessica. We're actually kind of used to this. We're watching the forecast class really closely, but especially when we have hot marathon years and, and when it gets really hot in the summer, we've got all sorts of equipment specifically for this, from simple things like ice baths to devices that actually put cooling pads on patients and circulate cold water to bring their temperatures down. So we're ready. And there's all cumulative effects, right? It's the longer this goes on, if it's not cool overnight, that's when body temperatures can really start to become concerning, right? That's exactly right. You need, your body needs a reprieve. And so if it doesn't get cool at night, that definitely makes things worse. And let's talk about the two most common conditions here. There's heat exhaustion, and there's heat stroke. A lot of us might use those interchangeably, but I imagine there is a difference, and what is that? There's a big difference, Ben. The biggest difference is actually that heat, and mostly because you actually treat them differently. So heat exhaustion is when you're feeling a little dizzy, you might have some muscle cramps, you might get a little nauseated. Um, when that happens, you need to get yourself inside, ideally to some air conditioning, and start cooling off and drinking some water. But heat stroke is totally different because it's a real medical emergency. Here, your temperature can get up to 104 degrees. You can pass out. You can actually stop sweating, which is really dangerous. And if you notice somebody getting confused and passing out, definitely call 911. Okay, it's good to know. And as you know, the extreme heat so far this summer has been scary and even deadly in some states, especially that we've been mentioning, Arizona, California, we know. If there's a week of 100 degree weather stretch here, right? Could our health system handle that? Well, Jessica, Ben, you know my view on our health system. Boston's health system, system can handle anything. Mm -hmm. But that being said, it's going to take some public health preparation by cities around the state as well. You've seen this in cities like Phoenix, where they've set up cooling shelters, where they've set up hydration station. Boston has a plan to do that exact same thing because people who can't afford or don't have air conditioning, older patients, people who are homeless, they're going to need all of our help to get through this safely. Well, we're about to check in with Mike, and I think right now it's only looking like three days oh, in the good. 90s, but that's enough for us. Yes. Dr. Raja, good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for coming man. in. Thanks, Jessica. Always good to see you, Dr. Raja.